Welcome to Linux in School series. This is my favorite apps. I am Nico Luman. I'm an international educator and I use open source software solutions in my school and in my work all day long. Actually, this desktop system that I am doing this uh, video on is also a Linux system. Now this Linux in schools is almost like a daily, well, thanks to the lockdown, so um, a daily series with my weekly streaming coming to you on Saturdays or Sundays, so stay tuned for that. Now one of the main questions that I got um, after the install a series. So I've made three installation uh, videos, how to install Ubuntu, how to install um, elementary OS and how to install pop OS. Now, one of the most frequent questions was well, what programs are there? Are there the same programs? What do I do? And so this um, episode and a few episodes after this will address those things. So number one thing what you should do is to check if there is a Linux version. Now if there is a Linux version then you should definitely install that from the distributions software store. But in some cases your favorite app has not made a Linux version and there is no way of getting it on the Linux. But don't fear, there is always an alternative and sometimes the alternative is actually as good as or even better than the original. So let's get to it. Now the objectives that I use um, at school is from the technology integration matrix that is a Florida Center for Instructional Technology College of Education in the University of South Florida. Um, and I want to highlight out of the five, I want to highlight three. So it is that students use technology tools to collaborate with others rather than working individually at all times. So the solutions that I'm looking for, it needs to enhance collaboration and enable it. Um, students use technology tools to connect new information to their prior knowledge rather than to passively receive information. So they need to be active participants of that process. And lastly, students use technology tools to link learning activities to the world beyond the instructional setting rather than working on decontextualized assignments so that there is transdisciplinary sharing across different disciplines and you're not bound by your physical space. So these three guidelines really are what makes me take what I need to do when I am choosing the software that I'm going to be using. Now, my first episode today is about text editors. Yay! So what I will introduce is text editors that I have used and now my my uh, experience comes from five to six year olds, six to seven, 7 to 8 and then 11 to 12. So we have um, three different types of softwares that I'm going to present here and um, I hope you're going to enjoy them. And what we'll do here is that during this time I'm going to show you how to install these software, how to get those software and what do they look like. And these are the three programs. These are the apps. So number one is Focus Writer. This is my favorite for 
the younger students. It is, as it says, it focuses your writing completely. You are able to just write. Now, Abi word is something that looks very similar to word. However, it is again a simpler version of it. And then finally, the big boy, the LibreOffice, that is a free and powerful office suite that is replacing the Microsoft Office, which is not installable uh, for your um, um, for your Linux distribution. So that those are the ones for what we're going to be using. So let's get right to it. So it is going to be going for favorite apps. Okay, so here we are uh, in In our distribution of choice of today, let's go and check from settings. Who are we? We are using Pop OS. Woohoo! Okay. And so Pop OS is a Ubuntu based um, software but, uh, uh, distribution that has its own software shop called Pop OS. shop and now I'm going to go and find my favorite favorite apps and here we have focus writer by grain got okay full screen word processor and look how stylish it looks okay and it is an a Debian package so it's going to be say waiting and now I should get um, the question to authenticate and now this is very important as um, in a Linux system you have an administrator and then you can create other users so if you are setting up a laptop uh, for your child for school or if you are a teacher and you take care of um, computers in your school what you want to do is you want to set up an admin user and then you want to set up your standard user but right now this is just for myself for these videos so I am just using the admin here are we able to do this Now we're downloading the focus writer. And now we are installing it. How to get the programs you can or apps you can click on show applications and here now we have focus writer or you can click on activities and then you can start typing if you know the name of the program you can start with that or if I want to just go with say text editor and it will give me two um, suggestions but because we want to go with focus writer first let's start with focus writer and here we have a focus writer is ready to be used so it gives me right off the bat a distraction 
free environment I do not need I, I don't have anything here I can move my mouse over to see the menus okay so this is how focus writer works so that we can make sure that we can see everything that is there to be seen now to um, make it even more beautiful we can use the default themes we can create our own custom themes we can also make sure which I did um, quite extensively was to also um, make sure that within the themes I would also make sure that Um, that we're first of all where we're saving what is the type of the saving uh, format um, how many uh, for students I would also make sure that there was a daily goal of how long uh, they would be writing um, making sure that uh, we had spell checker and again you can then choose a spell checker that really uh, fits uh, where you are at and then you can add also multiple spell checkers um, looking at the toolbars making sure that do you have uh, all your toolbars uh, ready so with uh, new theme you can also make sure that you find the right fonts and so forth so this is my um, chosen text editor and writing uh, tool for young students and my second one is the Abbey word and after I've in installed Abbey word then my late last one LibreOffice comes already installed as a default text editor um, for pop OS now while we wait for um, oh the installation is quite jiffy even on my um, virtual environment but I can just show you here is the office suite so within the office we have the LibreOffice calc the calculator that is same as Google Sheets or Excel LibreOffice draw that allows you to do like Google drawing uh, LibreOffice impress that is same as slides or in Word of course it's the PowerPoint and then LibreOffice Writer that is the same as Word or Google Docs. And here we have Abbey Word. Now, Abbey Word, it looks like a um, word. It is almost the same. I mean, we have the very similar type of toolbar up here now what's really nice about Abbey Word is that it's very light so this one works really well um, when you are using an older hardware an older laptop and then 
you, which doesn't have all the resources of a new brand new computer. So that is a very good way of um, repurposing older hardware and using lighter software. Now, if you have a modern hardware, if you are uh, willing to go whole, full hog, then here we have something that is made just for you. So this is LibreOffice. Now LibreOffice is a modern, easy to use, open source productivity suite. This works on um, any uh, platform. It is, um, this release is for uh, Linux, of course. And what I would do the very first thing is to um, look at user guides if you are looking for something um, very particular um, that you want to do um, here instead of um, like if you are trying to replicate functionality from your previous computer. Um, one thing that I do myself is that I will go in and I look at some of the settings so that I get the language settings, for instance, that all of these uh, are correct. I look at that I have language modules saved just to make sure that that is happening correctly. And then also measurement units. So I am in Europe currently, so it makes a lot more sense for me to use centimeters. Um, so when I am using the horizontal or the vertical ruler, I should be using those fonts. Now, another thing is that you can make sure that if you are collaborating um, with other people who use only certain type of word. So here you then you can um, already put in that, um, you know, most of the office will work only with the 97 docs or the newer 2007 doc X or of course you can convince everyone else to use the ODTs. You can um, set up your two digit years. You can help to improve um, usability and usage data. So all this is available in the options where we can then make sure that everything is as it should be. Now, once everything is fine, then it is just uh, up to you to start using it. Uh, a couple of things, what I found out is that you can also customize what this looks like. So um, we have uh, extension manager and customizations here where um, we can customize the toolbars, the menus, um, we can look at what they look like and so forth. So that really everything is customizable so that you can get it to look like as much as your favorite app that you are migrating from. So these three are my super duper uh, favorites, my favorite apps. Let me get to you. I will add these uh, links to their respective home pages in the description below. Now, if you want to hear more about my favorite apps and want to hear more about Linux, uh, please like this video, subscribe and hit that bell so that you get notified every time I upload Linux in schools series. 
episodes up and of course uh, leave a comment and ask a question so I know how to respond to different uh, needs or different questions that you might have and I will definitely um, continue doing this. I had um, some really interesting questions already and we'll be moving on to uh, video editing, uh, graphics and um, so forth. So those episodes are next in line. So thank you for watching.